10 on the game clock. Down by three. Thomas for the tie. Got it! Creating the switch right there. Get Kispert on Thomas, but you can't play with the ball. Looking at the shot clock at one for the win! Cam Thomas, winner, winner! That's what big-time players do. Big-time players make plays. Big-time players make plays. Wow, what a shot. If it wasn't clear already, you should know. Cam Thomas was born to be a bucket, and it's plays like this that make the Brooklyn Nets believe that they have found the biggest steal in the 2021 NBA draft. Because if you didn't know, playing in a summer league with top second-year players like Patrick Williams, top current rookies such as Cade Cunningham and Jalen Green, and even former Team USA players, players like Kenneth Fareed, it was Cam Thomas who led all of Vegas in scoring with 27 points per game. And the thing is, this is nothing new. As last year at LSU, as a true freshman, Cam was fourth in the entire nation in scoring with 23 points per game. He was a five-star recruit in high school. He scored over 20 points in his first NBA preseason game. You get it. At every single point in his life, Cam Thomas has scored a basket after basket. But for some reason, Cam slipped to the 27 pick in the 2021 draft, which means we have to ask, why did Cam Thomas fall so far and why do the Nets think they have the steal of the 2021 NBA draft? So what's up guys, Mike here, and yes, today we are talking about perhaps the most slept on draft prospect in this year's draft class, Cam Thomas. Now, before we get into this, please subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. The NBA season is about to be back, trust me, we're going to be on a grind here, so subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss any. Thing. Also, please like this video. It helps me out a ton with YouTube's algorithm. And for now, let's get into this. In his one and only season in college, after he was a five-star recruit in high school, Cam Thomas averaged 23 points per game. And by the end of the season, Cam had put himself in absolutely elite company as he not only became the first freshman to lead the SEC in scoring since 1989, but he also joined some huge names on the list of freshmen who averaged at least 23 points per game since 1993. That list includes Kevin Durant, Trey Young, former number two pick Michael Beasley, former number one pick Markel Fultz, and Cam Thomas. Every single player on that list except for Cam Thomas went in the top five of their draft, which means, again, we've got to ask here, what happened? Because it's not like Cam Thomas is just some kind of me for scorer who puts up empty stats and it doesn't translate to team success. Cam actually led his team to wins and an NCAA tournament appearance, unlike some guys on that list. And in the NCAA tournament, LSU made it to the second round where, again, Cam was a star, becoming just the third freshman ever in NCAA tournament history to score at least 57 points in his first two NCAA tournament games. The other two players on that list are Kevin Durant and Zion Williamson. Again here, elite company. And how did he do it? Well, at LSU, Cam shot threes at a very high rate as he attempted 7.2 threes a night, but he knocked down only 32.5% of his shots from deep. Now, you may think this is a bad thing. However, it's really not. Because when I look at Cam's three-point shot, I see nothing but a huge place where he can improve, and the reason for this comes in two places. The first is Cam's free throw shooting. If Cam Thomas is truly great at one thing, it is drawing fouls, and at LSU, he took 7.6 free throws a game. That was actually the second most total in the entire nation, and Cam finished first in the country in free throws made because he shot 88% from the free throw line. Scouts often say that they look at free throw shooting as a long-term indicator for shooting in general because if you can make free throws at that high of a rate, it means your fundamentals and touch are there. And certainly with Cam, an 88% free throw percentage is a huge sign that he will improve his shot from deep, as is his work ethic and dedication to the game, which we'll get into in his high school years in a second. For now, continuing to look at how he scored in college. As we can see, Cam already has a stellar mid-range shot. And really, when it comes to Cam Thomas, Thomas as a scorer right now, this is where he earns his money. He's crafty, he draws fouls, he gets to the basket, and he knocks down mid-range shots either out of pick and roll situations or iso situations with ease. That is what makes Cam a deadly scorer and makes him so hard to stop. I know a lot of prospects and a lot of basketball players right now are all about the 
three-point shot and I get it. The three-point shot is a very efficient shot in basketball. There is a reason why teams are shooting significantly more threes. But again, to me, this mid-range shot is an indicator that Cam is going to be able to step back and shoot more threes. There is certainly nothing wrong with his shot mechanically and there is no reason why he's not going to be able to take a few steps back and make a higher percentage from three. So to me, the fact that Cam averaged 23 points a game in college in his only season without being lights out from deep is honestly pretty crazy. The thing is though, scoring a lot and scoring in this way was absolutely nothing new for Cam. Because as a kid, Cam was already a walking bucket when as a seven-year-old, he won a free throw contest by knocking down 33 free throws in a row. Something that Dwight Howard has been trying to do his entire life. Cam also played with nine and 10-year-olds at the time and dominated them. And from there, the legend of Cam's scoring really began. And that's the thing that's weird to me about Cam's situation. Because why is this guy getting so slept on? In high school, he was a five-star recruit. He led the Nike EYBL in scoring and was named Offensive Player of the Year in the Nike EYBL. If you didn't know, he was joined by a ton of top recruits there. He also played just two seasons at Oak Hill Academy. And in those two seasons, he left as the program's leading scorer. He scored 2,219 points in two years at Oak Hill, and he averaged 31.5 points per game as a senior. If you didn't know, at one point or another, players such as Carmelo Anthony, Kevin Durant, Rajon Rondo, and recently Cole Anthony have played at Oak Hill. It is a powerhouse. So the fact that Cam set a record for most points scored in a career there in just two seasons is pretty insane. And because of this, while scouting him, his college coach, Will Wade, said this, quote, he's the best scorer I've seen come out of high school or AAU since I've been coaching. He's as prolific a scorer I've ever seen. Meanwhile, his coach at Oak Hill said this, he is one of the most locked in players I have seen in high school with his attention to detail. He is always in the gym early working on his game shots. Detail oriented, hard worker, always in the gym early. What more do you want from this man? I mean, all this sounds very good to me. Sure, Cam needs to work on his playmaking. Sure, he might be a little undersized. Sure, he's not the best defensive player. However, how did this man fall to the 27th draft pick? You are not going to find the answers in the NBA Summer League because while some players certainly struggle to adjust to the more athletic, more physical, and more skilled gameplay when it comes to NBA basketball, Cam not only stood out again, but again, he was absolutely a dominant. As previously mentioned, Cam led the entire NBA Summer League in scoring with 27 points per game, and I think it's very important to look at his Summer League games because they were just a few months ago, and really, we can dissect here why Cam was so effective. So again, as you can see, Cam was just lights out from the mid-range as he's able to score off a variety of dribble moves and step-back jumpers, and he was still able to get to the rim at a great rate. Now, Cam is not the most explosive finisher, however, he is crafty, he does have a nice touch around the basket, and would you look at that, in the Summer League, Cam attempted 9.75 free throws a game. He also made 85% of those free throws, which to me shows that his foul drawing skill and ability to knock down his free throws were no fluke from college. Cam is just built that way. Not to mention, during the Summer League, Cam absolutely dominated teams with higher rated players than him, because yet again, Cam showed that he was not afraid of anyone. His string of four games included a Spurs team that Cam dropped 36 on, and then against the Wizards, with Washington's number 15 pick in the draft, Corey Kispert playing, Cam showed up to the tune of 31 points to Corey's nine. But still, for whatever reason, Cam has been slept on to this day, even after his awesome preseason debut. Because here we are again, in his first official preseason game with the Brooklyn Nets, there was Cam, playing 22 minutes and scoring 21 points. His first basket tells us everything here. We're under two minutes to play, one on the shot clock, and the Lakers are gonna turn it over. They're not, and down it goes. As you can see, in his first game, things go completely wrong near the end of the shot clock with Anthony Davis on him, and somehow, Cam is still able to drill this shot. The man was just a born scorer, and after that, now officially at the NBA level, even though it was the preseason, we still see the shiftiness. We still see a knockdown mid-range jumper. We see his touch on a floater, and in 22 minutes, he even managed to take seven free throws and make six of them. An awesome debut by a player I expect huge things out of. If you didn't know, the Nets have a pretty loaded roster with Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving, and they also have a bunch of guards and wings in general, so playing time is going to be hard to come by. But the thing is, the Nets are often injured, so Cam is going to have his chance to step in and contribute, and he's also going to be able to benefit from veteran leaders. Even if the stars on the team aren't there to guide him, I'm sure guys like Patty Mills are going to be able to provide veteran leadership, and as for his coach, former MVP, 
rookie point guard Steve Nash, a man he can definitely learn some more playmaking from. Nash said this after Cam's first preseason game. Cam can score. He can get to his shot and make shots and he hits some tonight. In general, I'm just happy with the level of transfer from training camp. And guys, I've got to say, if Cam continues on this path, I feel like everyone is just going to be left asking a giant question, which is how did we not see this coming? Cam Thomas has scored the ball at a high level at every single level of basketball that he's played at. And I think there is a lot to this. I think that he is going to be able to score the ball at a high level at the NBA at some point in his career. It might not be during his rookie season. It might not be in year two, but remember the kid is young. He is still just 19. He has a lot of room to grow and I expect a big things from him. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, remember, please subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day, guys, and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. Make sure to click on one of them. Again, I know you're going to love it. And other than that, have a great day and peace.